Okay. What's up, class? So we've got solving rational equations, part two. Okay, so do we remember our steps for solving rational equations? First, we want to factor everything. Now, this step was not a step that we've had any practice with. Last video, all of our polynomials and the numerators and denominators of the rational expressions were already factored. They were linear, or they had one term. So there wasn't anything to factor. In this video, we're actually going to get some practice doing this first step. We're not just going to be able to skip it. Second step, get rid of all denominators. Okay, so the big thing that's getting in the way of us being able to solve a rational equation is the fact that there are x's in the denominators of the equation. So if we can get rid of those, then we can uh, move forward in solving it. So how do we do that? There's two ways to do it. If we see in any fraction matching factors, we can cancel. And then we can always, and this is uh, probably the usual way to do this, is to s multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator, which is often abbreviated LCD. Okay, after we do that, we want to multiply everything together. Sometimes there's really nothing to multiply, but sometimes there is. And if there is, we want to do that here. Uh, after that, basically we've just got a bunch of algebraic terms separated by pluses and minuses. We want to get all of those to one side of the equal sign. And we do that by adding and subtracting the, the, uh, the terms that we uh, choose to add and subtract. Uh, fifth point, after we've done all that, we're going to have a zero on one side because everything else is on the other side. We're basically going to have a polynomial that's equal to zero. We can solve the polynomials by finding zeros, finding the zeros, which is something that we already know how to do from last test. Okay, we know how to do that from last test, to find the zeros of a polynomial. Okay, and now we get to what's new about this video. Okay, there's a new thing in this video, we haven't done this yet, and that is to find extraneous solutions. That word might be new to you, it looks like this, extraneous. It looks like extra, and then neous, extraneous solutions. What is an extraneous solution? An extraneous solution is a solution of a simplified form of the equation. So it's a simplified, it's a solution of a simplified equation, but it doesn't satisfy the original equation. doesn't satisfy the original equation. Sometimes this happens. As you're going step by step solving a problem, you eventually get to a step that has, you know, a solution that doesn't actually work for what you started with. Uh, and that solution is called an extraneous solution. So why do we want to know about those? We want to know about those um, so that we don't include them in our answer. Okay. So how do I find extraneous solutions, right? Step six says to check for extraneous solutions. How do I check for those in rational equations? Well, in a rational equation, solutions are extraneous. That's, again, ex extra, and then neous, extraneous, when they are also um, excluded values. Okay, so you know how if we can use this as an example, this rational equation. Is this a rational equation, by the way? Uh, it's got an equal sign, so it's an equation, and it's got a rational expression, a fraction with polynomials. So it's definitely a rational equation. Now, <coughs> the it says that solutions are extraneous when they're also excluded values. Okay, So an excluded value happens when the denominator of any fraction is zero. So We've only got one rational equation here, one fraction. Um, and you can see x minus 2. When would that become 0? When would the denominator here become 0? It becomes 0 when x is 2. Okay. So when x, is, x, is, x equals 2, that would be an excluded value. If I solved all this, and I'm actually going to do this. If I solve this, and one of my answers, or my only answer maybe, is x equals 2, then I have to say that's an extraneous solution because it doesn't satisfy the original equation, because if I actually put x equals 2 in here, uh, it would make you have to divide by 0, which is not allowed. That's an excluded value. Um, so let's just do that and, uh, and see what happens. So let's remember our steps here. First, we want to factor everything. Okay. Um, two polynomials here uh, that we could factor. Actually, there's a third one here. 
Uh, this one's a monomial. We know we don't have to factor that. The denominator is linear. We don't have to factor that. That's already fully factored as well. The numerator, though, that's a quadratic. That's a quadratic. I'm going to factor it up here real fast. Quadratics, you still have to factor. There's no GCF. So because it's two terms and there's no GCF, I know my only shot at this is seeing if it's a difference of squares polynomial. And sure enough, it is. I can write the first term as x squared, the second term as 2 squared, which means that I can't just plug these values. This is my a value, this is my b value. I can plug them into the formula for difference of squares. a plus b and a minus b. So this polynomial equation that we have here in the numerator, I can write it in this factored form, and it's the same thing. Okay? I can write it in the factored form. So I'm just going to replace the polynomial I started with with the factored version of it. So x, x plus 2, x minus 2 are the factors of that numerator. Okay? And then that's all over x minus 2, and it's all equal to 2x. Okay? It's all equal to 2x. All right, now step two. Step two was to get rid of all denominators. Now there's only one denominator here, and we had two two options. We could cancel matching factors, or we could multiply by the LCD. We'll always start with that first one, cancel matching factors if you can. We've got a denominator of x minus 2. Is that is there a matching factor on top? There is, which means we can cancel those matching factors. And then all I've got is x plus 2 is equal to 2 times x. Okay. So how am I going to solve this now? I want to do step 3. Uh, well, actually, step three. Uh, step three is multiply everything together. That only needs to happen sometimes. In this case, there's nothing to multiply, which means I can skip to step four. So there's no multiplication problem here that I can do. There's nothing to multiply. So moving on to step four. Step four, that's where we need to be. Step four is to uh, get everything to one side or the other by adding, subtracting. Let's take the stuff on the left side and let's move it over to the right side. How am I going to do that? Well, I've got to subtract an x to get rid of that x. But if I subtract an x on that side, I've got to subtract an x on this side. And I'll subtract a 2. But if I subtract a 2 on this side, I've got to subtract a 2 on this side. Okay, so I'm subtracting an x and a 2 from both sides. So x minus x is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. And of course, that was the whole point, was to get rid of everything on this side and leave just 0. But then this side is where things get different. Uh, 2x minus x is uh, just 1x, right? You take 1x away from 2x, and you're just left with 1x. And minus 2, it's 0 minus 2 is still negative 2, negative 2. So can I solve this equation? 1x minus 2 is equal to 0. Uh, that's my final polynomial. Can I solve it? That's step 5. Well, let me just add 2 to both sides. Let me add 2 to both sides. Okay. And uh, I'm going to get uh, that uh, 2 is equal to to x. Now, last video I would have stopped there because that's all the steps that I had. In this video, um, we have a sixth step. A sixth step, which is to check for extraneous solutions. Okay. Now, an extraneous solution, let's go back up here and remember what an extraneous solution is in a rational equation. It's extraneous if it's also an excluded value. So when I say check for extraneous solutions, we're really checking for excluded values, okay? So, and we already, I, I kind of just verbally did this, but let's do it for real. Excluded values happens when the denominator is equal to zero. So there's my denominator, okay? X minus two, that's the only denominator I have. If there were more denominators, I have to check for more excluded values. There might be several excluded values, but there's only one here. So I'm gonna see what happens when that denominator is equal to zero. Whatever I get is gonna be my excluded value. So I'm checking for excluded values right here. I'm checking for excluded values. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I've got that my excluded value is equal, or is, is, is uh, x is equal to 2. 2 is my excluded value. Okay, so here's the problem. The problem is that when 2 is an excluded value, it can't be the answer to my equation. Because, and let me, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's check this here. Because I said that x is equal to 2 was my solution, right? And that's what the solution that the whole process gave me, all the steps gave me, that x is equal to 2. Okay. 
Can I, um, does that actually work though? Let's put 2 in for this equation, and I'm going to get uh, 2 squared minus 4 over, uh, and see, so I'm just plugging 2 in for x to see if it really is a solution to this equation. Okay, um, and then if I just calculate that up a bit, I'm going to get uh, 4 minus 4 over 2 minus 2 is equal to 4. In other words, um, 0 over 0 is equal to 4. And what's the problem with this? The problem is that there is no answer to 0 over 0. It's undefined. It's not equal to 4. This is not true, which means that the check fails. Um, and that just shows that what I said earlier was right. If, um, if 2 is an excluded value, okay, then we have to exclude it from being an answer. Okay, so even though it, the solution said this was an answer, it can't be. So if that's, if that's not an answer, then what is my answer? Well, if that was the only solution and it's extraneous, then I have no solution. So my final answer is just that there's no solution because the only solution that I found turned out to be, um, I just reversed the U and the O in that word, no solution. The only solution that I found turned out to be extraneous, which means it's not really a solution to the original equation because it was excluded. So that's my final answer for this problem. Okay, so let's let's just review some of the some of the facts here. An extraneous solution, the things that we need to check for in that step six, they are not solutions. It's not a solution. Okay, the reason we care about checking for it is that if we can, um, if we find them, we want to uh, keep them. Uh, out of our answer. So I got, just to, one more review, I got 2, but 2 is extraneous because it was an excluded value, which means I had to keep it out of my answer. It wasn't really a solution. And I checked that right here. I checked to see if it was a solution, and it wasn't. Um, so I had no solutions to this problem.